Okay, we've made our rings. We've got eight rings, uh, four that we'll need and four spares. And now we need to split the rings. So I've got a, a Morse taper adapter for my lathe it's, it's to take the uh, headstock from a four to a three. And that fits the rings really nicely. So now I just need to come up with a way to press that ring onto the taper a little further to pop it. And I can do that with my hydraulic press, but we need to make a plate with a hole the right size so that this ring can uh, uh, be pressed a little further up on this taper and see if we can get a nice clean pop there at the, at the file joint. So let's go give that a try. So the first thing I needed to do was to drill a hole in my press plate. And so I made a center punch at the center of the hole of the plate and brought in my tail stock with a dead center to uh, get approximately centered up on that plate. I didn't spend a whole lot of time on it, but then I started working my drills. I took about three different steps up before I got to my half inch drill. I cut out a couple of those steps in the video, but you get the idea. And this is my half inch drill bit here, which is the largest I can chuck up in my tail stock. And this drill bit does a great job for me. You can see those beautiful chips that are coming out, the flutes. I do put cutting oil on it to keep it cool. And I've what you're seeing is the cutting oil burning off. That's the smoke. But if you look at the color of the metal of the plate within the hole, and if you look at the drill bit tip, you can see that nothing's getting overly hot here. So the, bit, the drill bit staying sharp and we're getting a nice pretty hole. But I need a bigger hole. So I brought in the boring bar. And for me, this is just having fun. I, I need a bigger hole, boring bar will do it. And it doesn't need to be precise. So I can just practice my, my boring techniques. And I hope I'm not too boring with you as I do that. Uh, I'm going to speed it up here in a second at four times normal speed. So uh, you don't get bored with me, no pun intended. But there's nothing precise about this. I just stick the mandrel up there and, and see if it'll go in the hole properly. It needs to be, the hole needs to be big enough that the entire mandrel length will pass through it, but the ring will not pass through it. So it doesn't, uh, it doesn't take rocket science, uh, to make this work, but great practice for your techniques on the lathe. A boring bar is not necessarily an easy tool to use on the lathe. And there we've got the fit we're looking for. So now what I want to do is scratch me a mark on the inside circumference of this ring. And just like the, the saw mark in your driveway concrete. This is supposed to be a suggestion to the molecules that, hey, this is where I want you to break and this is the direction I want you to break in. So the uh, file is run back and forth in the same groove until I feel like I've got a nice little scratch there and that'll encourage the break. And I mark it with a Sharpie so that as I put it on my mandrel, I can have it facing toward me and watch the crack occur. I start getting worried. I'm running out of mandrel and it's not cracking. Ah. How about that grunt. So now I've got a problem. How do I get the ring off the mandrel? But I got it. Okay, I've added my taper attachment. And uh, what this does is locks down the slide so that it'll follow this taper here. And you can set your degrees here. I got roughly one and a half degrees, which is close to a Morse taper. And now I'm going to cut a taper on this plug and see if we can split the rings. So I'll use my eccentric engineering diamond tool again. As I've stated earlier, this is my go to tool. And start running it back and forth to put a one and a half degree taper on this mandrel I'm building. My thought was I just needed more length that if I had a little more length, I'd get that crack. And I was having fun here watching these chips come off as a ribbon. That doesn't remove heat.
from the steel, which is a bad thing. You really want those small chips to come off rapidly and bring the heat off with them. But it does give you a pretty good surface finish and it's fine. So now we're back at the press. And I'm pressing. And there's the crack. I'm overjoyed at this point. So I put another ring on the mandrel. And I press. And I press. I'm getting real frustrated. I'm pressing and it doesn't crack. So I grab my first one and go over to the vise just to cool down and let's get one made and make sure we know what we're doing here before we ruin all eight rings. So I took the one that did crack and I've got a bad feeling about it. It is spread apart and it just doesn't feel like a a ring to me it does it's very stiff and sure enough you cannot get it to go in the cylinder so i figured out that i was stretching those rings they were about a uh, hundred thousandths oversized by the time i got through with them on the mandrel so i reverted to a technique that i'd seen on youtube where you just flex the ring back and forth and on YouTube, they make it look so easy. They strike it about three times with a hammer and it cracks and everybody's happy. That's not the way it works, I don't believe, unless they have a different hammer than I have. What you're doing is you're work hardening that spot. And to do that, just like when you work harden an aluminum can and, and pull it apart, you've got to tap, tap, tap. And I wound up with a perfect split it works you just got to take your time it takes about five minutes all right so then you want to set the ring gap and uh, this isn't the best footage in the world but you can see i've got the ring sitting at the front of the cylinder and the piston is behind it and i'm using the piston to square the ring up and so you want that gap to be three thousandths of an inch on on this particular bore so I'm using a filler gauge and making sure that the gap's right. I had to hit it a few times with the file to get the gap set to three thousandths. But once that's correct, I grabbed a scrap piece of steel, machined it down to 200 thousandths in width, which is 15% of the diameter of my ring. And I use that for a spacer. We're gonna uh, heat treat the ring so that we have a spring tension outward in it and to do that we need to set a gap take it over to the fire bricks i start heating up the spacer first because that's the big heat sink and then i get all the perimeter of the ring a dull red and i'm going to cover it up with a fire brick so that it's a little bit insulated because i want it to cool nice and slow and this is going to reset those molecules so that the gap is larger now I take it over to my little mini surface plate which is just a home depot granite plate and you can see my gap is larger than three thousandths now but if i were to place it back in the cylinder i would once again have a three thousandths gap i've just set some spring tension on it which is what we want and i clean it up with my scotch bright pad it polishes up nicely and uh, spend a little more time than i showed on that but it may, it's a beautiful ring. I am ecstatic with the way it's turned out and can't wait to get that up on the piston and see how it's going to work. So I made some more rings and then I held my breath as I put them on the piston. This is a point of the construction where a lot of guys break their rings. The inside diameter versus the outside diameter sets you know that radial thickness of the ring and it needs to be just right if it's too thin the ring will break and if it's too thick you can't get it up on there and there's too much tension so mine seem to be working by the way you want to set those gaps 180 degrees apart before you stick it in the cylinder but i've made me a little sleeve or a cuff out of some tin to go around the piston and squeeze the ring gaps closed so the rings will slide into the cylinder and i tapped on the on the rod coming out of the end of the piston 
to get it seated. I'm so sorry you can't see this. I've ordered a better camera mount for overhead shots, but uh, just trust me, this wasn't magic. It tapped down in there, and I just had to try, and there's a little bit of friction there. It'll ease up as I run the engine in, but you can see that uh, once I reassembled everything, the engine runs down the track nicely, and I'll block it up, and I'll run these wheels for probably 30 minutes or so and let those rings seat in we'll have a, a really good operating locomotive please take the time to subscribe to lane the project guy i love having you around and want to hope you'll want to see this project to completion thanks again for being with us